Good morning. My name is Zhu Yang Yu. I'm an associate professor in the civil engineering department at UMass Law. Today, I'd like to share with you our research on the development of portable synthetic aperture radar imaging sensor for UAV bridge inspections. My talk is organized by the following components. I will start by introducing the problem and review the existing sensing and inspection techniques. Then I will talk about different existing UAV applications for infrastructure inspection. Then I will introduce our imaging for remote subsurface sensing. The fact is, we have a growing population of deteriorated infrastructure systems, such as bridges, in this country to be managed. About 42% of highway bridges in the US are already more than 50 years old. And most of them are only inspected by visual inspections at least once every two years. But visual inspection only provides the surface information of bridges. If we want to perform detailed or subsurface inspection, that process is usually time consuming, labor intensive, and very expensive. The aging of infrastructure systems such as highway bridges can be conceptually described in figure one. Initially, a bridge will not degrade rapidly if properly constructed. But over time, with material aging, man-made and natural hazards, and after experiencing long periods of service load, the condition of the bridge can soon degrade to the terminal level. At this point, a decision must be made for either rehabilitation or reconstruction. However, before reaching to this point, there's already increasing level level of risk for certain failures of bridges. And the purpose of inspection is to provide decision makers such as state DOTs, the current health condition of a bridge, such that certain failures of structures will never happen. There are three main challenges in this problem. First, the longevity of a civil infrastructure systems over several decades can create problems in passing information from generation to generation. In figure three, the first concrete building was built in 1875 in New York, and the first concrete skyscrapers was built in Ohio in 1903. The first concrete bridge was built in 1889 in California. Today, they are still standing. Secondly, changing environments also contribute to the accelerated deterioration of infrastructure systems, such as the increased loading levels like heavier trucks. Advances in sensing technologies ironically also contribute to a challenge in bridge inspection. Not only because the change in sensor resolutions can make data comparison difficult, but also the use of new sensors will create different data formats, making the baseline oriented condition assessment very challenging. But there are also opportunities. For example, recent developments in unmanned airborne vehicles, UAV, has presented itself as a promising technology to more efficiently inspect bridges. Furthermore, there's also increasing attention and growth in artificial intelligence to help engineers to process a large amount of data. In this talk, I'd like to talk about our developments of a smart, self-powered portable synthetic aperture radar imaging sensor for UAV bridge inspection. So what are the existing sensing and inspection techniques? Showing here is a selection of existing sensing and inspection techniques. Some of them are remote and others are contact. They are differentiated by interrogating different materials properties in principle. Here, table one summarizes the different materials properties corresponding to different inspection techniques. Now let's look at the UAV applications. Other panelists already talked about their UAV bridge inspection techniques. Here, I will just provide a few more examples. UAV can certainly be used to inspect surface cracks distributions on concrete structures by using high definition cameras. And with computer signal processing, we can also extract crack patterns from the photos collected by a UAV system. If we use different kinds of sensors, such as infrared, other physical properties such as surface temperature distribution can be captured by the UAV. Furthermore, Infrared images can also be used to detect the lamination potential and cracking in concrete structures. Very soon researchers have found a way to combine different sensors with the drone platform for infrastructure inspection. In this case, a laser scanner has been mounted onto the drone platform to inspect a dam structure and the power plant. 
Recent developments in UAV certainly indicates numerous possibilities for future UAV systems. In my opinion, these future developments are inspired by three different trends. One is by borrowing the concepts of military UAV systems. And the second is the development of hybrid UAV systems. The third trend is developments of commercial drones by retailers such as Amazon and Google. While we are fascinated by these interesting UAV systems, there are some fundamental questions we must answer. For example, are we trying to turn drones into cars or are we trying to turn cars into drones? Are we trying to build our drone system with more airtime? Or are we trying to create a UAV system with better mobility? And we must answer these questions before we further confuse ourselves. Now let's talk about SAR imaging and what can we learn from SAR images of concrete structures. SAR imaging is a mature technology in remote sensing and usually performed by a SAR imaging sensor carried by an aircraft or a satellite platform. Traditionally, researchers and engineers use SAR images for large area terrestrial sensing, such as landscape shift. And we decided to borrow this idea from remote sensing, but we will be interested in looking at the near surface information in SAR images of concrete structures. Essentially, we are trying to combine advantages in near field sensing and the ones in far field sensing. We want to be able to perform remote sensing and obtain subsurface information. So why SAR imaging? Well, SAR imaging has multiple modes. There's a spotlight mode and street map mode and scan mode, inverse mode, and many other new modes being developed by researchers. By looking at these different modes, resolution certainly will vary. And that means SAR imaging can be used for different purposes. If it's a large area sensing, low resolution but rapid inspection mode can be used. If it's for more thorough or detailed inspection, the focused or the spotlight mode in this case can be used. Few theoretical aspects are provided on this slide. From these equations, we know that the resolutions in SAR images can be improved by bandwidth, frequency, and the size of synthetic aperture. That offers civil engineers an opportunity to develop a system if they have a target defect in mind. In figure 16, we can see that the range between the radar and the target affects the size of the footprint. Selection of these system parameters in SAR imaging must be problem-oriented. For example, lower frequencies offer better penetration for subsurface sensing, but higher frequencies provide better resolution for damage detection. So how is NSAR image produced? Well, essentially, by collecting the reflected electromagnetic signals or radar signals with different frequency components in time, we can convert these frequency signals into the time domain. And by using the back projection algorithm, we can convert these signals into space domain. This process can be illustrated in figure 18. In SAR imaging, resolution can be improved by the superposition of sub-images. In other words, to produce high-resolution SAR images, the measurements at different angles must be performed. Without the superposition of these SAR images, better resolution SAR images cannot be obtained. Now, how about the hardware development? As you may saw, we've been developing the SAR imaging system in the past eight years using home antennas and network analyzers. Over the years, we spent a lot of time improving the portability of the system. Knowing that this SAR imaging sensor may not be the most cutting edge system we have, but it's already a system allowing us to combine it with UAV platform for few applications. Because electromagnetic waves cannot penetrate through metals, our focus is mostly on concrete and composite structures. Shown here is a fourth example on SAR imaging of concrete cylinders. We have four different kinds of concrete cylinders cast here. Two of them are externally wrapped by glass fiber reinforced polymer and with artificial defects. One specimen is cast with four rebars inside and one plain concrete cylinder is used for background subtraction. The first application is the detection of subsurface delamination. And we found that SAR imaging is capable of detecting the location and the size of a subsurface delamination in the GFRP concrete system. 
In this case, detection of subsurface defects from the use of an angular range of 60 degrees provides a very good result. In figure 21, we can see the difference between a smaller defect and a larger defect. What about the effect of bandwidth? Figure 22 shows a progressive evolution of SAR images at different bandwidths. From this result, we can see the use of increased bandwidth leads to a much focused SAR image. For subsurface steel rebar detection, the presence of surface subsurface rebar can be detected by the formation of scattering signals in SAR images. The location of this subsurface rebars can also be identified in SAR images. And the second example that we did was on concrete panels. In this case, we're interested in knowing how the background concrete affects the signals in SAR images. We have four concrete panels with the three artificial defects considered, and we also monitor the change of moisture levels in all these concrete specimens. If we want to understand the SAR images of concrete structures, we must understand the how the background signal from concrete affects the SAR images. Showing here is how effective SAR images can be used for detecting the moisture change inside the concrete panel specimen. In figure 25a, when the concrete panel was saturated, greater cyan produced and wider distribution of cyan produced can be found. When this concrete specimen was losing the moisture, as evolving from A to the figure F. The pattern of change in the cyan produced and the distribution must be understood in order to remove the effect of moisture change in the cyan images of concrete structures. We also study the effect of water to cement ratios, which is an important parameter related to the strength of concrete. We found that the sensitivities of cyan images in detecting the change of moisture content remains for different values of the water to cement ratio. This result also indicates the possibilities of using SAR images for strength estimation in concrete. In figure 27, evolution of moisture content in four concrete panels was monitored and imaged and shown here. On this result, we can see that SAR imaging is also sensitive to the change of crack characteristics, in this case, change of crack width and change in crack depths. Now the next question is, how do we make SAR images useful for bridge engineers to assess the condition of bridges? In this case, we integrated the SAR image into a 3D point cloud model. In the 3D point cloud model, geometry and the location of inspected areas can be easily found. And the 2D SAR image can be stitched into the 3D point cloud models through image processing. In figure 28G, the integrated SAR image and point cloud model allows bridge engineers to monitor the change of concrete structures in the surface and the subsurface region for long-term monitoring. In conclusion, SAR images contain two-dimensional information about the target geometry and also materials problem. To fully decipher SAR images of concrete structures, a systematic effort to understand the effect of one factor among other factors is necessary. This is one of the major research activities undertaken by the researchers at UMass Law. Secondly, it is important to realize that the resolution of SAR images can be improved by the frequency, bandwidth, and the aperture size. Combined use of the three different parameters allows bridge engineers to design the different systems for different purposes of inspection. And in this presentation, we have demonstrated the use of SAR imaging on concrete structures for the potential application of UAV bridge inspection. Finally, data registration is always important to help bridge engineers to understand the result of SAR images for decision making. This work is not possible without the help of our graduate and undergraduate students. I'd like to thank my former doctoral students, Ahmed El Ziadi, Qi Xiang Teng, current doctoral student Harsh Gandhi, Tech Dant, and current undergraduate students, Yanelis, Tiana, and Sophie. We also like to thank the financial support provided by the TIDC at UMAIN through the basic project 1.4. Administrative support provided by Jim and Amanda is always appreciated. We also like to thank the City of Law for helping us to have access on the bridges in law. 
as well as the permission provided by MassDOT. At last, the research findings presented in this talk do not reflect any views of the USDOT. With that, I thank you for your attention and look forward to our discussion.